Good morning, good afternoon. Marlene Forney here again, your instructor for LT100. Um, today, we are going to be speaking, I am going to be speaking with Monica Johnson, who currently is the director for um, the Southwest College Naturopathic Medicine in Tempe, Arizona. And here is the web page for the college. It is a graduate degree program, which results in people have becoming MDs in uh, naturopathic medicine. I'm taking you now to the library's website. And this is what students using library resources see when they access Southwest College, okay? And as you can see, it is run on the software Spring Share, which we will be discussing in a future date. And uh, just in case you don't quite see her as well on the uh, on our video feed here, I'll take you to the link for library staff. And there we have Monica. And she is here as the director. And she works with two staff members in her library, two library assistants, technicians with sisters. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, ask Mar uh, um, Monica some questions. First of all, Monica, about your credentials. What is it that you've done already in libraries in terms of academic work? Um, my credentials are I have a bachelor's degree um, that I received from California Lutheran University. And then just recently, I went and completed my master's degree from the University of Arizona. Excellent. Wonderful. Now, how did you get, what made you even think of libraries? What's the first memory you have of being drawn to libraries? Well, I'd have to say the first memory I had was, um, you know, my mother who loved to read mystery books. And she would take me to the public libraries and I would uh, check out the Nancy Drew books <laughs> and, and read them, you know, through the night. As I continued through high school, I actually was able to take a library class in high school. Um, it was an elective class and it was, you know, learning how to um, understand call numbers. I do remember my test clearly where I had to um, go do a shelf reading and books were out of place. Um, back then we had the card catalog, not so much of an online catalog, but a card catalog. And I had to do some, you know, processing and um, taking care of some just general circulation duties to pass my quiz. Um, then oh, as I went wonderful. into college, yeah, as I went into college, I continued to work in libraries. Oh, wow. So now, I'm, not, um, I'm not sure you knew this, but I actually got my start in libraries, also in high school. I actually had an entire study hour um, as a library worker and at that time, because I'm much older than many of you and Monica, <laughs> um, we didn't have those um, course options to do service, to work in the office or anything. But because I needed to take, I petitioned to take an honors class that would not allow me to have a lunch hour. Uh, they designed a lunch hour for me where I actually ate with faculty for half of that. And then the other half, I worked in the library and that was with Sister M. <laughs> and I remember it well. So you, you mentioned in college that you worked in libraries, but that was as a student worker, correct? Correct. That was as and, a student worker. And when was the first time that you worked in a library full time outside of uh, being a student? Well, um, after graduating, I um, had connected with an old friend from high school, and 
you know, I was going through a career change, and um, she had said, you always like being in the library. Um, and her mother's friend was a school librarian. And she said, maybe you should look at getting a job in a library. So a position came up to be the acquisition assistant or technician at Thunderbird, which is the American Graduate School of International Business. And um, so I applied to the position. And I started working in 19, I want to say, uh, 80, <laughs> 1997. Nineteen ninety seven. Yeah, so I started doing acquisition work. Um, so that was basically I ran a budget and I did all the um, newspaper orders for the international school. Um, and that was wow. kind of fun. I did it for about two years. Okay. Thunderbird being uh, a graduate program in business, correct? Correct. Okay. And then how long were you at Thunderbird? I was there for two years. And what kind and of work did you actually do there? I did, um, you know, all the acquisitions regarding um, cereal. So I ordered international paper, um, international papers. Um, uh -huh. Because it's an international school, we, you know, worked. I worked with companies throughout Africa, um, Spain, either via email or on the phone. And then I got some experience doing cataloging as well, which gave me the opportunity when a position came up at Maricopa Community Colleges to apply for a cataloging position at um, the community colleges here in Tempe, Arizona. Wow. So um, after moving, you know, after accepting the position at the district, or the mm -hmm. community college. I came in as a cataloger, and then I also took on ex um, responsibilities as an inter interlibrary loan. Oh, wow. So, now, what year was it that you went to Maricopa, by the way? Maricopa? Commun Maricopa? Yes. Yes. What year was it that you went to Maricopa? I went to Maricopa in 1998. Okay. I started okay. there in February. Okay. Okay. And so I was at Maricopa Community Colleges working at the district office in library technical services is the department I worked in. And I did, um, you know, it's mainly behind the scenes. So that's where um, we supported the 10 community colleges with mm -hmm. many of their um, ordering for resources such as their their books, and um, through our interlibrary loan, everything was um, you know moderated or monitored through the district office. I see. So okay. As a cataloger, I would catalog the books or the resources, whether it be books, videos, or um, sometimes music scores or maps. Um, it depended on which community college needed it. We were always doing, you know, the cataloging for all the colleges. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so as, as my career changed at the district office, more opportunities kind of came about for me in which I got more into doing interlibrary loans and mm -hmm. became a loan for the 10 colleges and then working with copyright um, under the interlibrary loan. I see. Standards. So that was pretty interesting, too. And I did that for about five years. I was at the district office. Mm -hmm. And then in 2006, I moved to the um, Topeka Community College, where I took on the responsibility of just dealing with cereal. So ordering cereal, um, checking in cereal, it still was in the technical support area, so mm -hmm. at Mesa Community College, it's referenced as um, the library collection management area. I see. So it's behind, it's behind the scenes. Yes. But being on campus, I was able to get exposed to other things as well, working on the reference desk and um, doing some circulation if needed. I see. But my main job was ordering all the magazines, doing the binding for 
um, any of our journals that we bound and routing magazines to um, the librarians that needed them. And then also um, taking care of any um, new journals that needed to be ordered. And then also keeping track of any journals that were missing. I see. Yeah. So that was kind of fun and interesting. Great. Now, you said about uh, periodical holding. Okay, so I'm just bringing up the current uh, periodical holding display from Mesa, and if I remember correctly, they use a vendor, correct, to allow this yeah. display? Yes, they do. Um, we use EBSCO as mm -hmm. our vendor, and um, mainly most of our databases came through there. I see. Um, this um, database that we're looking at is called um, A to Z. Yep. So it pulls in all of our serial holdings um, so people can do like a one-stop lookup. I see. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I see it's similar to um, other uh, vendors in this area. One of your competitors would be Serial Solutions. Correct. And I believe even at one time you subscribed via Serial Solution, correct? Yes, we did. At one time we subscribed to Serial Solution. Um, and so, you know, this is a nice thing for the students or for patrons because they can look things up by subject, by title. And it will show, if um, Marlene can go back to the title listing, mm -hmm. it will show not only if the college has holdings on it, it will link the students back to the college resources as well. Okay. I see. And the, uh, the, I, I see some links here for um, different databases. I was trying to find one that was actually physically in the library. I'm not scrolling through quickly enough. Yeah, but if we go to, um, to my school, we can definitely do that at some Very time. good. Okay. Um, so how long were you then at Mesa? I was at Mesa until um, 2010. Mm -hmm. um, in 2009, I decided to go back to school and get my master's degree. And um, since I was already established in Arizona, I was looking for a school that would allow me to um, take classes both online and in person. And the um, University of Arizona, they do allow students to, you know, take classes online or in cohorts, or you can actually go down to um, the to the campus and take classes, you know, during the summer I if see. you want to. And so I was able to um, complete my degree within a year and a half because. I pretty much took two classes every semester, and then in the summer, I took classes on campus for the oh, two wow. summer classes. Okay. So that was really nice um, because I was able to complete my degree quite quickly. Right. Um, not every... Go ahead. I was going to say, one of the things that was a, a real treat for me was my internship in which I got to go do an internship at the Phoenix Art Museum. Oh. Um, which kind of tied back to my bachelor's degree. And um, it was just a nice semester to actually be at the Phoenix Art Museum, um, understand how books are cataloged and processed and ordered through there, and looking at all the you know, amazing artwork um, that they have and yes. getting to archives as well, how they store their pieces, and and just understanding that you know being a librarian, it's not just working at an academic school, but also being exposed to museums or businesses. Mm -hmm. So it was really it was really a fun thing to do, exciting thing to do. That's great. That's great. So in terms of um, the MLS program that you completed with University of Arizona. Many people work as technicians and sometimes uh, 
proceed in their academic careers and get bachelor's degrees or then get the MLS, but not everyone goes out and actually changes their their workplace uh, setting. And I'm thinking, wow, that's gutsy, leaving a really secure position because I worked with you at Maricopa. At that time, I was a librarian already, so I was working in that capacity, and I knew your work as a technician, and I knew that you had the skills and the ability, if you wanted to get an MLS, and you already had your bachelor's degree, but not everyone in that position does complete an additional degree or actually go out and seek a new job as a professional. Can you tell us a little bit more about that experience, moving out of the world of working as a technician, seeking a professional position, and why you think you succeeded? Well, I think I succeeded because along the way, as I was working as a technician, um, I'm a true believer of taking any opportunity that is kind of provided for you and given mm -hmm. to you and not necessarily thinking you have to um, receive monetarily, monetary reward for it. Correct. Um, because when you're, the ability that I had and the experience that I had is working as a cataloger, and understanding interlibrary loan at the district and then moving into a position where I got exposed to um, serial and ILL more at MESA and even the ability to do reference work, that all tied into me getting my degree. And one of the things I had the opportunity to do was work with a small acupuncture school that's called the Phoenix Institute of Herbal Medicine and Acupuncture. And where was that located? That's located in Phoenix, um, Arizona. Okay. And so I had the opportunity to work there part time as their library director. And the years of experience kind of helped me um, come in and build a library for them and help them through accreditation. And that same experience just gave me the desire to actually go and get my degree. Um, because, you know, as a technician, you're kind of put in a position in which, you know, you can't make um, decisions about the library and you can't really advance. And if you want to be in a position where you can contribute as a librarian, as a teacher, as a, as a co-worker, um, you know, you have to take that next step in getting your master's degree. Right. Right. And all those opportunities kind of helped me take that jump. Um, because I think when you're working in a, as Marlene had said, in a secure environment, like Maricopa Community College is, you have good benefits, um, you know, it's a great organization to work for, but you have to be willing to jump into something new. And the one thing I didn't want to do is get a master's degree and then not utilize it, um, especially for two or three year period. I just didn't want to not utilize my degree. So an opportunity came about where the position that I'm currently in was posted. And just because people knew I worked at the acupuncture school, um, the job description got forwarded to me, and I applied. And I have to say, it was one of the most challenging um, processes for me to go through. I had eight interviews. Oh, wow. To Two at Maricopa Community College. <laughs> wow. Um, I think when I applied for my job at Thunderbird or at, um, you know, Maricopa as a cataloger, I only went through one interview. Um, when I came to Mesa, I actually went through an interview not only with the committee but with the president. Um, this job, it was a three-month process for me to wow. go through. Yeah, and it was and But tell us a little bit more about Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine because it is a graduate program. And you had worked previously at Thunderbird, again a graduate program, but tell us a little bit more about this college and or this graduate program and explain maybe why they were so rigorous. Well, um, you know, it's a four year program. There are five naturopathic medicine 
schools throughout the country. Um, yes. And there's two of those are located in Canada. So in Arizona, um, this is, you know, we are in the top five as far as educational institutions. And it is a four-year program that um, students come into um, with a diverse background. Um, some people are making a career change, and they've been pharmacists. Um, some students are, you know, in in business, and something with their health happens, and so they decide they want to take a different avenue of how they receive health care. Um, they can be from their own point of view or from a family member getting sick. And it is an, it's a four-year program in which students come in and they learn how they become naturopathic doctors. Okay. So it does have practice. And I just want to give you a quick background of what naturopathic medicine is. Naturopathic medicine is basically treating the entire body, mind, and spirit. So we're looking at you know what you're eating, um, whether you're rested. Um, what your environment at home is or at work is, and we're not so much using traditional medicine to in terms of diagnostic health. or surgical intervention. Right. So we use acupuncture. Um, they have hydrotherapy there, and um, if Marlene can go to on the left hand side of the screen under library services, um, okay. there is. There is On the left-hand side of the screen under library services, okay. Scroll down, there's a tab that's called curriculum support. It's it's it there it is, okay. And we click on that tab, um, this is all of the modalities that are studied at our school. So you'll see okay. we have acupuncture, basic medical sciences, botanical medicine, general medicine, homeopathy, mind-body medicine, nutrition, physical medicine, and then there's research. Okay, I see A to Z, but I only um, see three at the listing. Top. Well, at the oh, very okay, top. I see at the very top. Okay, the tabs on this page then? Very good, okay. Those are the so modalities of how you post medicine. medicine. But you also have a tab here for physical medicine? We do, because we do do physical medicine as well. Okay. So if I click on that, then I just see a description of what that department does and who the personnel are associated with that aspect. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. That's okay. correct. So, now, um, so that we keep the focus on library. Right. How, you know, it's a big deal to be a library director. And you started out as a technician. But some of our technicians actually have to operate as if they're directors because they're the only staff in the library. Now, you are the only professional staff in the library. So when you make decisions, you don't have a, a peer in the library world on site to talk to. You work with other technicians, and you demand a lot of them. I do. I do but you have to do some things. Can you outline your task versus the task of the technicians at Southwest College? So my task um, at the South as the director of the library, um, I have to do an annual budget. Okay. Um, I have to be in contact with vendors and um, with booksellers. Um, I'm also in charge of being a liaison to all faculty members so that I can understand what materials they need to support their class. Um, I'm also um, on the President's Council, so I have a monthly meetings that I have to attend as a director. Um, and as you know, you know, I work heavily with the Dean of Students. <laughs> <laughs> it's, an, it's an array, and I think, you know, my job has evolved as I've come there. Um, I deal with copyright on a daily basis, so that's educating people about copyright use, how materials should be used, but then I also hire and I also monitor my staff, um, you know, what they're doing. We have student workers in the library. I in addition to your two um, permanent staff members? 
in addition, yes, I, this semester, the summer semester, semester, I have one graduated um, in one graduate student from the Library Tech program at Mesa Community Prep College, I and I have my two staff members, and then I have six additional student workers that work for me. Now, are student workers from the college themselves, or just anyone you hire in? No, they are students that work. They are student workers that are through our school. Okay. So, now, so yeah. tell me about the tasks that your technicians do compared so, to what you do. Are they involved in selecting materials? Or are they strictly processing? Do they make any? Yeah, if we go back to the library staff page, um, okay, you'll see that Judy is in charge of all the cereals. So she has to help me with ordering through EBSCO. Okay. Um, she also orders um, some of the media, um, video, um, audio conference tapes. And that's why I said contact for help with journals. Right. So okay. she does the online stuff, she does the print stuff, and then Robert does his job also is about interlibrary loan. So when a staff person puts a request in for interlibrary loan, he's the one that processes it through either DocLine for medical resources or yes. through WorldCat, for search Ooh. WorldCat or okay. Okay. resource sharing. They WorldCat go. being OCLC. Uh, subscription service or database collection. Now, are you um, members of OCLC or are you using the free WorldCat option? No, we are members of WorldCat, I'm um, OCLC, and we're members of OCLC not just for our interlibrary loan but for our cataloging as well. Okay. So are you using Iliad or something like that? We use um, we used Iliad on the staff side. Uh, no, okay. I'm sorry. We did not have Iliad. No. Okay. We used um, OCLC World, um, WorldCat. Okay. So you identify who owns things through OCLC, but then you contact those libraries separately. Is that correct? Correct. If okay. they're in the free center, it goes through that, that whole process. Very good. Very good. So you so use I the online know. system to then initiate your request. And actually, the students do that. We have every directly. Okay. Okay. And do their request themselves, and it just goes into our queue. And that is monitor very that. nice. And they do that not only um, through first search, but yes. they do that through um, you know their library account. The Excellent. Account. Excellent. So I think you know you were asking me, do I demand a lot of my technicians and? Being in a small institution where our student body is about 374 and our staff, faculty, um, administration is about 250, when we, I do rely on them to help me with collection development. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they get assigned a faculty member in which they work with to, you know, to help them go through understanding about weeding and reordering. Um, they have to help me train the student workers because I'm not always in the office. Yes. So, for example, Monday I will be at an all-day um, lecture or seminar um, with members of our President's Council and EC and upper management. So I won't be in the library that day and they will have to manage student workers and, you know, be on task. And now, you said at a regular work week, do they provide reference assistance as well as yourself? No. Our library is very small. We have what? a 1,500 square foot library, and so I do not have a reference area. Okay. We just have a circulation desk. Um, we have about 13 carrels for students to sit in, and then our general collection is in there, and we also have a computer lab. So, so um, if, they, if they need assistance with their research, do they just, is it all self-directed or is it primarily um, to acquire materials that they come for your the help? The students and the faculty members, if they need help with research, they contact me. Okay. Um, they send okay. me an email and um, I will do a personal um, reference interview, interview with, with them. them. Okay. And then we sit on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And okay. So we've, we've, we've exceeded the time that I asked you to give me of 20 minutes, <laughs> but it's fascinating. No, no apologies. 
it's fascinating to hear people's journey in the library world. And you have worked over 10 years as a technician, maybe 15, is that correct? But uh, now yeah, you've embarked on a professional career as a librarian. Yes. What would you tell people who are interested in libraries? Because you kind of have a different background. Your undergrad was in fine arts. And um, I'm going to put something up on the screen here um, while you answer that question. Because you've done some very interesting things in your life that I don't know if you're uh, you're pretty reticent about sharing things, but I've always been amazed when I've spoken to you in our time working together, how much have you accomplished in a variety of areas. So tell us what you think people should look for in their library careers. What's most important, especially for students who are taking classes as technicians? Because if I understand correctly, you have library technicians working for you as interns through the program at Mesa Community College in Mesa, Arizona. True. And I think the one thing, as futures of libraries are changing with the way people receive information, yeah. um, is understanding how technology plays in our, in our role. Um, and especially depending on the um, library that you're going to work at. If you're working in a small library like I'm working at, I definitely um, have to have someone who's willing to do a lot of different roles, such as circulation, collection development, um, shelf reading, um, processing, a little bit of cataloging, and also troubleshooting. Um, you know, you have to kind of be willing to take a chance and just immerse yourself in what's happening not only in your area or your library, but just what's happening in, in our world and how people are getting information. As you guys can see, you're doing this class online, so we're doing a video recording, and <laughs> you know, it's a new way of connecting to people. And it's important to kind of remember just to take every opportunity that comes your way. Um, you might be scared at first, because I was very scared about becoming a director. I went from uh -huh. being a technician straight into being a director. And uh -huh. it, it's a little nerve-wracking to have yes. all of that responsibility placed on myself, um, you know, making decisions, and as Marlene had said, making them pretty much on my own. I think, Marlene, how many librarians do you have at your institution? Uh, we have seven. We have seven. seven, correct. So, you know, she has that daily constant collaboration with them, whereas I don't have that. So the other thing is, is you're in a position where you're not having that to network. I network with my classmates all the time, and I network with other librarians that I've known throughout my careers. And that's what will help you kind of stay abreast on what's happening. OK. Well, thank you so much. I was trying to show the students a little something about uh, <laughs> you. Uh, Monica shared with me that she had actually uh, visited Rwanda for a special program with a group that she knows and works with. And she spent roughly two weeks there. And what she shared with me was an Animoto video of her trip on a safari. And it was just gorgeous.
that's, I think, one of the things that I love about libraries is that basically libraries are such a fascinating place to work. The backgrounds of people are very, are really varied and amazing. Okay, because we have people who sometimes have uh, graduate degrees and are working as technicians, and we have librarians who uh, come directly out of library school, going straight through school, and others who come to libraries as a second, third, fourth career. And personally, I've known quite a few. Um, I've known quite a few. Uh, artists, I've known quite a few engineers, I've known people just with fascinating backgrounds, and yet they come to libraries because of a love of people and serving people to meet their information needs. I think that's what stands out for me, but I was glad that you were willing and able to share with our students more of your background and what your experience is. So thank you again, Monica. Thank you. And best of luck continuing over at Southwest College. And um, if you have a professional request of myself, I just encourage you to ask. If I have students who are in some way uh, capable and moving into Arizona, I'll definitely be uh, giving them your name as a contact to see if there's anything available. Great. Thank you again. Thank you. I can conclude the recording.